I have some borderline grades that I need to bring up. I think I'm gonna make cookies for my professors. I think for Dr. Kenny, Dr. Butler, and Dr. Koontz. Who's gonna help me with this? Grace. Grace will help me with this. All right. Hey Grace, I need some help making some cookies. Cookies? I was just gonna make some classic chocolate chip cookies. Come on, all you can help. All right, Jackie, preheat the oven to 375 and we'll get the right ingredients together. We're gonna need baking soda, eggs, butter, sugar, brown sugar, chocolate chips, salt, vanilla, and some flour. First, we're gonna mix our wet ingredients. We have one stick of butter melted. To that, we add one half cup of white sugar, one quarter cup of brown sugar firmly packed, because we want all we can get, one teaspoon of vanilla, and one egg. So we're gonna mix the wet ingredients. Welcome to Cookie Chemistry 349! <laughs> so, <laughs> so, watch as Jackie, a student who loves cookies, and Grace, the cooking expert, demonstrate what Anthony and I are going to teach you about the chemistry behind baking cookies. So, by this point, the mixing of sugar, butter, and eggs is only a physical change. Anthony, do you remember what a physical change is? Ah, mm, uh, okay. So, I don't, yeah, I don't really want to look in books, so I'm going to go on Wikipedia then. <laughs> Physical changes occur when objects undergo a change that does not change their <laughs> chemical nature. A uh, physical change involves a change in physical properties, and physical properties can be observed without changing the type of matter. So that's pretty chill. I also, sugar is a very important ingredient. Sugar is hygroscopic which means it draws moisture or water to itself. In addition to its sweetening properties then, sugar helps make cookies tender and soft. Beyond this, sugar absorbs heat, much like an endothermic reaction. A reaction that expels energy. I mean absorbs energy. <laughs> it's, the, it's the absorbed energy. Yeah. Right, so and this helps the cookies to brown. For the dry ingredients, we're going to add one and one eighth cup of flour, one half teaspoon of baking soda, that's our leavening agent, and then one half teaspoon of salt. Mix the dry ingredients well so you get the baking soda, the leavening agent, all the way through so all your cookies are equally fluffy. Next we're going to add the dry ingredients to the wet ones. Are we doing this right? It needs to be well incorporated but not over mixed. Okay. So, the flour is added later so that the gluten complex is uh, Oh, why? I, I, I know how to, I know what that is. That. Oh, the gluten complex is? Watch, it's like this. Isn't it like this? <laughs> And then, and then carbon makes four no, bonds. No. It's not G gluten. Carbon makes four bonds. Okay, okay focus. Oh, what is gluten? Gluten is a composite of the proteins gliadin and glutenin. These exist mainly in wheat. The mm -hmm. glutenin in wheat flour gives kneaded dough its elasticity and allows leaving le <laughs> ah, allows leavening and contributes chewiness to the baked products, right? Yes. I, think, <laughs> I just memorized that, so. Gluten provides many additional important qualities to bread. For example, gluten keeps the gases that are released during fermentation in the dough so the bread is able to rise before it is baked. In addition, gluten firms up when it is cooked and with the help of starch helps ensure the dough maintains its proper <laughs> shape. Finally, we'll add one cup of chocolate chips. Mmm, chocolate. <laughs> We're going to drop the cookies now onto an ungreased baking sheet in rounded tablespoonfuls. That's just the right amount to get the edges brown and the inside chewy.
Tell us about caramelization, <laughs> Jessica. No, that's not how it starts. Okay, okay. Okay. The small spoonfuls increase the surface area for more caramelization of the cookies when they are put in the oven. When surface temperature reaches 300 degrees Fahrenheit, sugar is broken down, resulting in a brown color and desirable baked flavor. This stage is known as caramelization. Yeah, it is. Good. And I learned yesterday that caramelization is the oxidation. Wait, oxidation uh -huh. is the loss of one or more electrons by an atom. Okay, you shouldn't interrupt. Me. Okay. Of sugar, it causes the thermal degradation of sugars, leading to the formation of volatiles and brown colored products. In this case, caramelization <laughs> involves the disaccharide sucrose. Yes, it does. Yeah, this, this leads to the acid catalyzed, everyone knows, sucrose hydrolysis. Wait, hydrolysis, do you know what it is? Mm. <laughs> it's the decomposition of a chemical compound by reaction with water. Yeah, I was just about to say that before you interrupted me, so that's good. Which produced the monosaccharides, fructose, and glucose. So, in general, the sucrose is broken up into fructose and glucose. Yeah. Now we put them in the oven for 8 to 10 minutes. We'll check on them after eight, and then let them go until they're golden around the edges. During the baking process, dough turns hard and crisp because the heat causes the moisture in the ingredients to turn into steam and evaporate. Heat also forces sugars and protein compounds to change color, giving cooked food those toasty brown edges and tantalizing flavors. Tantalizing <laughs> flavors. Okay. Right? Go. go. Right. Okay. Also, the sodium bicarbonate. Ah, okay. So I was trying to read it then. Also, the sodium bicarbonate that was in the baking soda heats up to release carbon dioxide bubbles to make the cookies fluffy. The chemical equation that shows this down. Kika decomposition is illustrated as follows. By you should wait, write wait, wait. the main concept because kids might oh. not get it if okay. they don't know the concept. <laughs> It's Le Chatelier's Principles. That's not how you spell it. Yeah, it's not like that. Okay, Le Chatelier's Principle there, is matter. the principle that if any change is imposed on a system that is in equilibrium, then the system tends to adjust to a new equilibrium counteracting Okay, they already learned that in CCAM 101. You didn't need to repeat it. Yeah, so. whatever. Okay, so the salt NaCl slows down this reaction. By making the equation shift to the left. Yeah, so this is left. <laughs> It's, you shouldn't look at that arrow, because that's right. No, I missed! Okay. <laughs> the alkalinity of baking soda. Well, yeah, a measure which is a measure of the ability of a solution to neutralize acids to the equivalence point of bicarbonate or bicarbonate. Of carbonate or it, bicarbonate. Yeah, and if it's tricarbonate, then it's super alkalinity. There's no tricarbonate. Okay, yes, there is. It's, okay. So the alkalinity lowers the caramelization point of sugar in the cookie dough, causing faster and darker coloring of the crust. Okay. No one cares about that. Also, the fat in the butter keeps the flour from creating an overly extensive network of gluten complexes. This makes the cookie lighter. And the fat and protein in the egg yolk hold the dough together. Mm. Also, the protein albumin in egg white holds the bubbles because proteins in general helps build structure. Anthony, what is albumin? Uh, let me think. <laughs> oh yeah, isn't it that one thing that refers generally to any protein with water solubility, which is moderately soluble in concentrated salt solutions? And, oh yeah, there's more. Experiences heat coagulation. 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 Which is protein denaturation. Coagulation. During this protein coagulation, three things happen. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> oh no, our title! Oh no, one. Yeah, oh, flavor develops for the better. Flavor develops. <laughs> for the Better. I could have enough room. <laughs> Two. Oh, cookie dough. Sea dough. Sea dough. Loses moist. Ah, loses weight actually. Due to loss. Of Is it fat? Due to loss of moisture. Oh, okay. Gosh. Right. Yeah. Due to loss. Of but you're the camera guy. I don't even know camera. <laughs> Alkalinity. Alright, ah, three, a dry, hard crust starts to form, H-crust, we'll call it H-crust, <laughs> starts to form, T, 
two form form because that's that's a four. Not till they cool first. Okay, so the cooling process. <laughs> Okay, the cooling process in general releases heat into the surrounding, which is an exothermic reaction, a reaction that releases energy. Cooling also allows for caramelization to finish and structure completely, and the proteins and starch bond and solidify, which make the cookies firmer and more rigid. Here you go. Dr. Kenny will love these original cookies. Grace, I need to make chewy cookies for Dr. Butler. Well, you're in luck. I'm making some whole wheat cookies right now. Flour has more protein in it, so the cookie stays clumped together more and you get a chewier result. Okay, by substituting all-purpose flour with whole wheat flour. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so it's whole wheat flour now. Yeah, it was. It used to be something else. The cookies will become chewier because gluten comes from wheat. Whole wheat flour has higher gluten wheat content than all-purpose flour. This leads to more strands of gluten to develop, which gives bread its characteristic chewiness. Mm -hmm. Huh? Normal cookies versus whole wheat cookies. Here's a chewy cookie. Whole wheat. This is perfect. Can we make a third batch that's more crispy for Dr. Coons? Sure. Um, <laughs> by substituting whole eggs with egg whites, the cookies will become crispier because um, oh, while egg yolks contain a very large percentage of fat which helps to tenderize the cookie, egg whites act as structure builders because of the proteins which coagulate during baking. So fat is a tenderizer while the protein provides structure. So the cookies will be crispier with egg whites that contain more protein, such as albumin. <laughs> what is that? It's a flow chart. Okay. It's whole, okay, so we had whole eggs. Uh-huh. We got rid of, we transformed them with egg whites. <laughs> and then we added fat to make it a good cookie. And then we added pickin, I mean protein, <laughs> protein. to make it a crispy. So to make it a crisp we, It's a crispy, good cookie now, instead of a whole get whole eggs cookie, mm -hmm. which is nasty. No, it's good. It's nasty. All of them are good. Sick. <laughs> okay. Conclusion. It may not look like it, but our recipe <laughs> is nothing more than a narrative of chemical processes. Yeah. What do you know about chemistry? Ooh, wow.